I now call to order this July 1st Friendswood City Council meeting and announce that we have a quorum. Tonight's invocation will be led by Pastor Bobby Kirkpatrick, Friendswood Friends Church. If you all stand, remain standing, and after the prayer, we'll say the pledges. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we're thankful to live in this city and in this community, a place that uh, is felt like small town and often is uh, growing and getting bigger too. And so, Lord, as we look to future decisions, we look to you. We look to you for guidance for the future, um, for what you have for us, and help us to be good listeners to you and to one another. Lord, we pray that for our world right now in general, that we want to be good listeners to one another. Uh, help us to seek more to understand and to be understood and to try to reach across and partner together with those that um, are often on opposite sides of issues from us. Help us bring unity through the way in which we relate to one another. Lord, we pray for peace in our world, peace in our community. And Lord, for this place, uh, we ask that your blessing and as the council meets, Lord, help to give them your wisdom and discernment. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thanks, Bobby. Okay, item four, city council comments and reports. Volunteers, Council Member Branson. Um, I just wanted to um, share some sad news. Cheryl Bouillon, who has been very involved and engaged in our community for a long time, uh, specifically with uh, Friendswood ISD and the Friendswood Schools Museum. Uh, her father actually served here on council in the 60s. Um, she passed away this morning, so please keep her in your prayers. Family name was Hater. Hatcher, I said Hater, that was baseball. I'm sorry, we we're just watching the Astros. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Cheryl Hatcher Bullion. So just keep the family in your prayers, please. Well, I'd just like to uh, uh, comment on uh, concert series. James Tony, our Parks and Rec director, thank you so much, sir. We had an outstanding uh, concert series this May and June, just finished up Friday night. Uh, in addition to the concert Friday night, we also had an event we called The Gathering which uh, celebrates all the volunteers and city staff here in Friendswood. And, and that was a great event uh, before the concert. And we also gave out some uh, awards for the photo contest during the concert on Friday, which was pretty neat. And I uh, absconded with one of those award winners. I'm going to put it up in my office here. It's such a great photo. So anyway, great show. I can go. Um wanted to mention some of the great trips that the Senior Activity Center is going to be going on. They're going to be really busy this July. Uh, they're going to Village on the Park for bingo and lunch uh, here in Prinswood. And then uh, that's on July the 11th. On July the 16th, uh, they're going to go head to Heritage Village, Clyde Gray House Museum and Picket House in Woodville, Texas. And you can reserve your spots, $25 per person, and it's from 8 to 4 in a tour. And gratuity is included. And then on July the 18th, they're out to lunch at the Stingery Restaurant and Marina. And that'll be at Crystal Beach. And that's from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's $5 per person. Lunch is on your own. And then Friday, July the 19th, they have the Hometown Opera in uh, Pasadena, Texas, and that's $15 per person from 6 to 11 p.m. And you can go online and sign up for these trips if you uh, um, really want to attend. They were doing a lot of really neat things. Uh, Friday, July the 26th, the AD Players Theater, Fiddler on the Roof, will be in Houston, and, and that's off of Westheimer from 4 p.m. to 11.15 p.m. And dinner's on your own at the Central Market, and that's $25 a person. So they're really busy over there. If you want to go and uh, join, um, you only have to be 60 years old, but get a physical. 
and uh, join up and and go to some of these great events that they go to all the time. It's a lot of fun. Blessings, uh, the, the the lunch at Blessings Hotel and Blessings is always a good one to go to. Hmm. Yeah, I, just had, I just had one quick thing. I wanted to thank Nikki Bender and Brian Mansfield for providing uh, some of the city council members with the, I'm gonna have to read this, National Incident Management Systems Overview Training. We called it NIMS all day long, but that half day course was very, very, um, uh, insightful and good training for, for city council members. So I wanted to thank them and their department for putting that on for us. Hopefully if we're all ready for emergency operations, we won't have to use that training. <laughs> well, I agree. Better be ready though. Yes. Oh. Can I thank, can I thank somebody? Council member Hanks. Yes, you. definitely. Um, I was a little shocked to hear about Cheryl. I'm so sorry about that and offer my condolences. Um, Thank you to the Knights of Columbus for the, the lunch at the gathering or the dinner at the gathering. I think they've been doing that for a while. And Scott Gordon, did he also contribute? Yes, yes, and definitely. all the others that helped out. That's a great tradition. And thanking our city staff members and volunteers that it's been going on for decades. Just another good thing about Friendswood community. Yes. All right. Item five, public comment. In order to comply with the provisions of the Texas Open Meetings Act, the city council may not deliberate any item not listed on the agenda. As such, city council will listen to public comment and may one, refer the item to city management for further action, or two, direct staff for the placement of said item on a future agenda. During public comment, the public shall comply with rules of decorum. Chris Johnson. Good evening, uh, Mayor, members of council. I, I come and I, to talk about specifically uh, item 10D, which is a resolution that's gonna be before, before you talking about amending the rules that facilitate the public debate with this council. And the only time that we have to come and actually talk to you about specific items is during the public comment, which is already limited to three minutes, and then during the public hearing. And of course, we all recall that on June 3rd, we had a very spirited public hearing, um, which the council uh, had to hear from five minutes from each one of the citizens about a very contentious issue. I went to the, uh, the city council's retreat last Saturday where this specific issue was discussed about the concept of changing these rules. I urge you to vote no on changing the rules because it's described as streamlining the process, but what it actually does is narrows the ability of citizens to come to you and voice their concerns. Something complex like a tax increment reinvestment zone is very difficult to get your thoughts out and your ideas uh, to counter those, those proposals in three minutes, I can tell you, because I'm already now burned through a minute uh, just introducing what I'm here to talk about. So I encourage the council, I, I heard the council at that retreat talk about transparency in this government, engaging the public as the tenants of good government. And so I encourage you when you're talking about looking at streamlining a process, streamlining in a way that narrows the public's engagement with the council is not a good, not a good idea especially on the heels of such a contentious public hearing where these issues were so personal to so many, the idea that the response from this government would be to limit the amount of time that they hear from the citizens, I will tell you, doesn't look like your, the, the citizens' best interest is at the heart of this. So I would encourage the council to vote no on any items that limits the public's engagement, especially at public hearings where these complex issues are, constantly, are consistently discussed. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Also, with regard to the minutes, I would encourage the council from that June 3rd minute, uh, June 3rd meeting to look careful at those minutes. I would encourage you to pull it off the consent agenda and take a careful look at those minutes to make sure that you feel that those minutes accurately reflect what was discussed during that public hearing, given that it's been such a contentious issue. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Phil Radiso. Good evening, Council, Mayor. I come before you tonight because, as you know, when I, I ran for City Council in 2018, and there were all kinds of items then about uh, uh, leadership and uh, being open with everyone. And I ask what happened to leadership a year ago when things became apparent that there was going to be a development uh, there that's down the street here with the boulevard and all of that and ask why leadership didn't bring all the parties together 
to resolve this issue instead of it being as contentious as it has. I've watched neighbors, and some of them are friends, and I've watched them, and very spirited, and, and that, and then hearing from them and talking to Mr. Tanos, you get the thing that there was a lack of leadership other than direction on what the city wants, not what the citizens want. And true leadership brings all the parties together and comes out with something that helps everyone along with the citizens of this. Because you know, Mayor, you and I have had conversations about uh, uh, attorneys and lawsuits and that, and that nobody wins that. And I can't help but to think that somebody is not going to be happy in this situation, and the taxpayers are going to end up with having to do something that they're not going to like. And I just wish there had been more leadership. Thank you. Item five, or I'm, I'm sorry, item six, work session topics. Receive and discuss an update regarding the, citizens, the City of Friendswood Capital Improvement Projects presented by Hill Arias, Director of Engineering. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, here to give our quarterly uh, uh, capital improvement project update. Uh, as uh, always, uh, feel free to interject. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. So uh, I'll jump right in. Uh, the first project we have for an update is uh, Blackhawk Boulevard, Boulevard Phase 2B. Uh, this is the uh, portion that you see uh, under construction on uh, Black Hawk Boulevard at, at this time. Uh, the uh, One of the uh, major milestones that's been met is the uh, installation of uh, the water line. A uh, large majority of the uh, underground work was going to happen in this phase. Uh, so uh, we're not going to see the, uh, the next phase take as long. Uh, but uh, I did want to uh, share with you guys that uh, uh, we're way behind schedule uh, from where we want to be. Uh, there's been uh, quite a few uh, forces beyond the uh, con contractor's control that have affected his uh, ability to uh, finish this project in a more timely fashion. Uh, they're uh, asking for 132 work days uh, in delays uh, outside of their control. Uh, when We've been uh, going uh, back and forth. We haven't uh, decided on uh, what exactly that number is going to be, but uh, it's going to be uh, less than that, probably half of, half of that, uh, that we're going to do uh, a uh, change order uh, sometime in the near future uh, to uh, reflect the, uh, the uh, delays that have been out, been out of his uh, control. Uh, these delays have been uh, weather related. They've been material related and uh, they've had some uh, long lead times on uh, some items. Uh, the important <coughs> thing that uh, to know uh, moving forward is uh, since the uh, start of this project, there have been some uh, 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 changes in the uh, avail availability of material. Uh, and uh, we've been kind of uh, <coughs> things up that uh, uh, things like uh, uh, line to stabilize subgrade uh, they're having to order that two weeks ahead of time. And uh, how does that affect us? Uh, they're uh, trying to guess that uh, they're going to be ready for uh, Lyme in two weeks and there's not going to be uh, weather uh, related uh, uh, issues in the meantime. And, and so uh, we're, we've, got a kind of, we've got that kind of uh, in the uh, back of our mind right now. Uh, uh, that those are the uh, the challenges that are going to be faced uh, moving forward. Not this, uh, not uh, uh, this contractor is not the only one facing this, but uh, uh, this is a bit of a smaller uh, job in, in the grand scheme of things, and uh, so that that's the uh, challenges that they're going to have uh, moving forward. Uh, right now, we're looking probably at uh, November timeframe uh, for the uh, the completion of this project. So. Hopefully, uh, next time I come back to speak to you, we're, uh, we're uh, <coughs> moving along on this. Uh, also wanted to share on uh, Phase 2C, that's the uh, uh, rest of the project to complete Blackhawk. Uh, we are currently in the uh, engineering phase and uh, repackaging those uh, bid documents. We expect the uh, plans for that to come into the city uh, here later on this month. Uh, and then uh, city staff will review it, comment them on them and 
from there, we will start preparing the uh, the bid documents so that we can uh, get that out for bid in the summer. Those two projects were uh, uh, Harris County Precinct two partnership projects uh, are, uh, for the past uh, two years. This year, we have a uh, another application that was submitted by the city that uh, has been awarded, and uh, we got that used uh, here recently. Uh, the city has uh, been notified that uh, the uh, precinct has decided to partner with us to uh, signalize the intersection of Bay Area Boulevard and Grisham uh, Road. Uh, that's at the uh, uh, very corner of uh, the uh, city limits right there next to uh, League City. Uh, the uh, uh, large majority of uh, the uh, traffic uh, going through that intersection is coming from uh, League City. Uh, and uh, League City has acknowledged that. They uh, have been uh, really uh, forthcoming in, in uh, helping the city. Uh, and uh, we, this is a, uh, a path forward. Uh, you might remember uh, last year we had to uh, put up stop signs at that intersection because of uh, a multitude of uh, T-bone accidents and uh, accidents that could have been prevented by a, uh, a stop sign. Since then, we haven't had the, uh, the same issues, uh, so the uh, stop signs are obviously working, uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, League City performed a, a traffic study at that intersection and determined that a uh, signal was needed at this uh, intersection. So uh, that's how all, all this came together. Uh, we have asked for uh, Harris County to uh, take this into their uh, inventory uh, of their uh, signals and uh, become the uh, responsible entity moving forward to uh, uh, keep up with that line and uh, keep that going for us. Uh, fire station number two, uh, the uh, uh, great news about this uh, project is uh, the uh, keys have been turned over uh, to the city and uh, it's a move-in ready facility. Uh, we have some uh, little minor things uh, that need to be uh, taken care of uh, in the, between now and the uh, the time the uh, uh, fire department uh, volunteer fire department takes uh, uh, possession of that building uh, but that is all in the works right now and uh, we'll have a, uh, a functioning fire department here, uh, fire station here in the uh, very near future so uh, 24 inch one uh, water line uh, crossing project. This is a water line that is going to connect uh, downtown to uh, Black Hawk Boulevard. Uh, this is a project that is being funded by uh, the city's ARPA funds, uh, American Rescue uh, Plan Act. Uh, and uh, uh, we are moving close to uh, a uh, s significant milestone on the engineering plans, 60-90% uh, plans which will be submitted to the city and, uh, and we'll be moving forward to uh, have that bid here in the uh, next couple of months. Uh, the uh, tank rehab project, uh, uh, you'll see the uh, on that picture right there, the old uh, water tower. Uh, it's been updated, repainted, looks uh, terrific. Uh, and uh, so that was one of the uh, three that have been completed uh, in the past uh, year three uh, water facilities. We have a fourth uh, and that's a ground storage tank at uh, surface water plant number one which is uh, behind uh, the uh, church at the intersection of Black Hawk and FM 528. Uh, that is a, a pretty significant uh, tank uh, for our water system and uh, that's not really something that uh, we want to have down for a couple of months for maintenance. So we're gonna wait, uh, let the summer pass, and uh, once we have the, uh, the peak of usage uh, in the summer, we'll go back, revisit this, and uh, get that tank uh, uh, repainted there also. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, next I'm gonna jump into uh, several projects or initiatives we have going with the uh, uh, Houston Galveston Area Council. Uh, these are all projects that are being led by uh, the uh, HGAC. Uh, first project is the uh, Friendswood Master Trail Plan. Uh, 
uh, that uh, project is uh, the uh, request for qualifications have been uh, uh, closed that period and we are currently evaluating uh, uh, the qualifications of several uh, consultants that have submitted uh, we'll be moving forward to that uh, here pretty soon the important thing to know uh, about this and uh, you might think uh, hey we uh, have a parks master plan that uh, should include this uh, well this expands upon the uh, parks master plan this is uh, going to get get into uh, the nitty-gritty nitty of uh, uh, trail planning so <clears throat> next is the uh, Brentwood Parkway corridor study another uh, project that is being led by the uh, Houston Galveston Area Council uh, the consultant for that has been selected uh, and uh, they're going to be uh, getting into the thick of things uh, here pretty soon they uh, have not uh, submitted yet a public participation plan uh, that's one of the next uh, milestones that they have uh, but basically this uh, uh, PPP is going to uh, outline uh, what the uh, schedule is going to look like for uh, uh, public meetings. Uh, they'll be seeking public input into uh, when uh, moving forward uh, what the, uh, the parkway would look like and um, uh, for, uh, giving an opportunity for input into uh, anything else that uh, the uh, public might want to say about the uh, uh, the parkway uh, the uh, public meetings uh, the dates of that are not known at this time uh, but as soon as we know that uh, we will uh, share that along and uh, we'll uh, also share the uh, a link to the uh, website that the HJC is uh, uh, developing for uh, this project that's uh, project specific uh, that will allow uh, citizens to engage that uh, consultant as well. Uh, then uh, we have several uh, projects that uh, we're calling the uh, carryover spending projects. The, uh, this is all uh, being funded by uh, some money that uh, has been building up into uh, the HGAC coffers that uh, is federal money and it needs to be spent uh, in the next two years. So. Uh, about a year ago, uh, uh, the HGAC uh, came to all the communities in, uh, in the area and asked for projects that uh, we felt could be uh, completed within a, a two-year time frame. And these are projects that were submitted to them. These are projects that are FM 528, along with FM 528, uh, that are designed to uh, reduce congestion and improve traffic flow. Uh, these uh, traffics, these uh, projects include uh, some additional turning lanes at Bay Area Boulevard, uh, a uh, new northbound right turn lane at Winding Wake, a uh, some dual left turns at uh, 518, and uh, re of uh, Sunset as well to uh, uh, increase, facilitate the movement to those intersections. Then the fifth project that they have is the uh, Princewood Parkway, what we're calling the E-Phase. Uh, that's the environmental and uh, preliminary engineering for this project. Uh, the uh, E-phase is going to uh, really rely on the completion of the corridor study. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, it's going to get uh, this project uh, uh, much further along. Uh, and it'll uh, include also um, the area between the city limit and uh, FM 2351. Uh, that's uh, that's all. Uh, uh, that area is going to be uh, uh, researched for the uh, environmental phase, and uh, we'll get some uh, plans out of this that will be uh, shovel ready. Uh, and again, the uh, HJC is uh, the uh, uh, one leading this effort right here. Uh, and uh, uh, again, the uh, uh, opportunity for public input for the. Uh, uh, Planning study uh, will be here, and uh, we'll we'll pass that along as soon as we get those dates for you. So, do you have any questions, comments? Thanks, Hill. Appreciate Thank it. Good job.
Mayor, we are five minutes ahead of schedule relative to the public hearing posting for the rezoning application. So could we go to the city manager's report? You bet. And I will take exactly five minutes. Okay. No. Okay. No. Um, there are a number of things that I'd like to highlight this month. Uh, as you know, this is a busy time of year for our Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, there's a little holiday coming up here in a couple days known as the 4th of July, which is a very, very big deal, not only in Friendswood, but across the country. Um, July is National Public Works, or not Public Works, sorry, Parks and Recreation Month. And uh, we take this time to recognize all the Parks and Rec departments throughout the country, but those especially here in Friendswood for the hard work they do to maintain a spectacular series of parks and offer the programming that uh, ranges in age from little kids all the way to senior citizens uh, so thank you to James and his staff and all the hard work that y'all do this month year round as well <laughs> next I'd like to highlight our food truck Tuesdays that's been taking place this summer this is not a Friendswood uh, led effort this is a um, um, farmers marker Friendswood farmers marker led effort but every Tuesday night in June and July you will have food trucks that line up outside of Stevenson Park um, and offer a variety of fairs to our uh, park goers and residents that are interested in partaking. It's usually pretty crowded even when it's raining outside, so we encourage folks to get out and try some, uh, some new and different types of foods here in the city. For those Swifties out there, I hear Taylor Swift, our cover band is coming to Friendswood in September. Um, tickets went on sale this past week, and I think they're sold out, are pretty darn close to being sold out. Uh, there's a Taylor Swift cover band that will be coming to S Centennial Park on September 20th at 8 p.m. Uh, from what I understand, she sounds just like Taylor Swift. So if you or your family members are Swifties, please feel free to purchase the last remaining tickets and attend. Uh, it's a great opportunity to, to enjoy a night out with your family and also proceeds will go to benefit the parks. I think John Ellisor is a Swiftie. <laughs> <laughs> no? no? Yeah. Um, today was Battle of the Patches. Uh, there was a competition between Friendswood Police Department and Paraland Police Department to see who can get more blood donated. Uh, if I'm a little slow this evening, I apologize. I donated some blood, so I'm operating with a few less uh, cells. Uh, uh, our very own Glenda Faulkner got a, a mug today for donating a gallon's worth of blood. I don't recall her being in there that long, but apparently she's <laughs> donated so much that she got the gallon mug. Uh, do we have a tally on who won that? Battle of the Patches. I don't see anybody from PD here, so I'll let y'all know later. Uh, next up, our police department was recognized uh, by Flock uh, Safety Power Group. Flock are the uh, automated license plate readers that are located throughout the city. This is uh, leveraging technology to better equip our officers with uh, real-time data as to who's coming in and out of the city, especially those that have warrants out for their arrest. Out of the over 3,000 communities that use Flock. Um, Friendswood was recognized as the top 20 user in the country. Uh, we applaud FPD's efforts to leverage this technology and look for other ways that we can uh, uh, get better technology to, to serve the community and provide a safer environment. Uh, the Knights of Columbus recently made a donation to our emergency services uh, uh, departments. A check was given to our police department as well as our emergency medical services department for the hard work they do to help them continue their efforts. So thank you to the Knights of Columbus and thank you to FPD and EMS. Master drainage plan. Several months back, the city of Friendswood executed an interlocal agreement with the drainage district to undertake a master drainage plan for the city uh, in partnership with the drainage district. Shortly after that agreement was uh, signed and dotted, the city of Friendswood acquired a grant through Texas Division of Emergency Management to fund a master drainage plan for Friendswood. It was a 90-10 grant in which the city got 90% of the funds from uh, state sources. Uh, as such, the drainage district has requested to um, take their share of what was gonna, previously gonna go towards this effort and look at other areas within their jurisdictions that are outside of Friendswood to sort of complement our master drainage plan. Um, the agreement allows for the, the separation of, uh, uh, our, allows for these uh, actions to be undertaken by both parties. Uh, we feel that now that we have the grant, it's a better way to maximize the use of our funds and, as well as theirs. So thank you to the drainage district. Hurricane preparedness. We are in the thick of hurricane um, season. There's already been two named storms at the third shortly uh, on the heels of the first two. 
Uh, if you haven't signed up for uh, receiving emergency alerts, we encourage all residents and uh, folks in the area to sign up. Uh, and also to, to look at the different needs that they may have for their home, whether those are go bags uh, ready to, to move in an instant if they need to, or if they have all the hurricane equipment and uh, uh, food supplies at their home to be prepared for if we have a hurricane or tropical storm. Uh, if you don't have flood insurance, I can't stress it enough, please get flood insurance even if your house is never flooded. It is a very cheap investment and pays dividends in the back end if, uh, God forbid, anything ever happens to your home uh, during a flood. It does take 30 days to take effect, so uh, sign up sooner uh, the better. Uh, lastly, I'd like to recognize the 55th anniversary of the Apollo 11 uh, landing on the moon. Our friends with Library will be hosting a celebration uh, later this month, Monday, July 15th at 7 p.m. Retired NASA engineer Harold Benson will be there to explain the NASA's uh, space program's impact on Friendswood. As you know, quite a few residents uh, in the area do work for NASA or have had family members that work for NASA, and it's, it's uh, left an indelible mark on our community, and uh, we'll be talking about that on July 15th. And that is it. I think I took just five minutes. <laughs> Good job, Rod. Thank you. Item 7, zone change request for 3111 West Parkwood Avenue special use permit to allow NAICS use number 237, heavy and civil engineering construction with an underlying zoning of business park. It is now 5.30. And I call to order this public hearing regarding a request for a specific use permit to allow NAICS use 237, heavy and civil engineering construction to be, al to be located at 311 3 111 West Parkwood Avenue, which is zoned business park, being 15.5244 acres out of BD Seal and Four Wood Survey, Section 5, Abstract Number 625, and I and GNRR Company Survey, Section 23, Abstract Number 624, Friendswood, Galveston County, Texas. This public hearing is being held for the purpose of giving all interested persons the right to express their views on the proposed specific use permit. Everyone desiring to be a part of this hearing should have completed the public hearing comment card in the foyer and submitted it to the city secretary. At the podium, each participant shall give his, her name and address in order to provide a proper rec record of this hearing. <coughs> the rules allow each person five minutes to present information. However, I encourage everyone to be as brief and to the point as possible. I'd now like to request that staff summarize the subject of this public hearing. Aubrey Harbin. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so this um, subject property, the zone change map is up on the board. So the underlying zoning is business park district. Um, currently this tract is undeveloped. Um, it has limited frontage on West Parkwood Avenue um, so be with the L shape. So the bigger part of, of the parcel is uh, sits quite a ways back off of um, 528. Um, we have a proposed development for this property. Standard Constructors Incorporated is a family owned company. Um, some of its members live here in the city of Friendswood and want to move their business here. Um, so they are currently located near Houston, uh, near Hobby Airport. Um, their proposed development here will include a three-story office building um, that is going to um, sit up towards the front of the property. And then um, this property is encumbered with a lot of difficult things on it to develop. So there's a drainage bypass. Um, I, you drive down there you see the tall communications tower that's been there I think since around 1980 and it has a building built at the base of it so all that will remain so there are huge guy wires from that um, tower um, that go in all directions on the property um, there's a pipeline traversing the property so um, pretty amazing they were able to fi figure out a way to use the property um, so there's two single story equipment buildings um, that are going to store their equipment um, and they, uh, the access to 528 to be able to get to 45 and 35 for transport of their equipment um, is a beneficial uh, part of this location. Um, so they would house 40 to 60 employees here in Friendswood. Um, Planning and Zoning Commission had their public hearing on June 13th and um, there were no, uh, no, no one spoke in opposition of the request. And the commission voted six to zero in, in a motion to approve the requested zone change. So that's a, a tower still operational? Any cell antennas on there or anything? I, I'm assuming so. Uh, yes. yes, yes. I drove out there. 
Okay. Good. Okay, great. Okay, there being no one desiring to speak on this item, I now close this public hearing. Item 7B, consider an ordinance regarding a proposed specific use permit to allow NAICS use number 237 heavy and civil, civil engineering construction to be located at 3111 West Parkwood Avenue. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion, questions? I just have a, I want to confirm something, Aubrey. There's a uh, eight part test for granting this uh, specific use permit. Uh, I'm just confirming for the record that this specific use and development meets all eight requirements. Uh, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Aubrey, is, uh, from what I understand, the equipment is going to be on location, but when it's in use and it's gone, it could be gone for two or three or four weeks at a time, and then it comes back. Um, we're not going to see a huge influx of traffic onto 528, I don't presume. Um, I don't think so. That did come up from the um, applicant. Jim, uh, that they're here if you want to talk to them. <laughs> uh, that did come up, and I, they are located close to Hobby Airport, indicate that they've, that they've not had traffic issues uh, where they're at now. Right. You're talking about just moving pieces of construction equipment in yeah, and out? They, they move in and out. And it might be gone for two or three weeks at a time. So, I mean, it's not like they're just, they're moving equipment every day. It's not equipment going to be every day. Every day. So yeah. point. Yeah. Right. I, I, this way I had one other statement real quick, and that is that, that um, absolutely, sorry. Oh, go Tommy, ahead, please. please. Um, at our meeting, that was asked also. And I believe the answer was that most of their equipment stays out for extended durations and is, is not at the uh, facility very often. Okay. Thanks, Tom. And Tom, this is going to drain into Dickinson Bio. Mm -hmm. Is that the drainage plan? We will. They'll turn in more detailed drainage, um, like civil plans for drainage okay. and utilities at a later date. We have this is just conceptual. Okay. Um, it'll go um, back to PMZ. Yeah. This will this will be the site plan approval. Um, so it won't, the site plan will not go back to PMZ. They will have to plat, um, and then we'll do the detailed civil uh, plans for utilities. But but you are correct. It is within the Dickinson Bayou watershed, so to go okay. to Dickinson Bayou ultimately. Thank you. That is, and Councilmember Ellisor, that is Tom Hinckley. He's the chair of planning and zoning. In case you haven't met him yet, wonder why. We've, we've had the first this, this. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Don't usually just let anybody just jump up and <laughs> start babbling. On. Okay. Uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor. Show it seven to nothing. Okay, going to item nine, business items. 9A, consider authorizing a school crossing guard agreement with Clear Creek Independent School District for school year 2024-2025. Do I have a motion on this item? Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Murad, do you want to? Just a brief uh, statement. Uh, historically, the city of Friendswood has employed within their police department part-time employees that operated as school crossing guards. Uh, those services are no longer being provided by the city of Friendswood. They are employees now of the school districts. Uh, CCISD is asked to execute a contract similar to what they do with other cities within their jurisdiction, and that is even though they employ the school uh, the crossing guards, that they ask the city in which those schools are located to cover the cost of those uh, services. Uh, so our share of that uh, will be $18,534 for the upcoming school year. Uh, this allows the district to determine uh, from a safety standpoint where they would like to house those crossing guards. We're simply providing them the financial mechanism to, to do so. Okay. Any comments, questions? I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion passes seven. Item 9B, consider authorizing the First Amendment to the Grant Administration Services Agreement with Grant Works Inc., for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Community Development Block Grant Mitigation Funds, CDBG MIT 24-065-030-E485, administered by the Texas General Land Office. Do I have a motion on this item? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Bill? Uh, just wanted to say this is a housekeeping item. Uh, we ha do have a uh, contract with them. This brings the, the uh, uh, billing schedule in line with what the state likes. Okay. Thank you, sir. 
Pretty straightforward. All in favor? Seven to nothing. Item 10, proposed resolutions and ordinances 10A, consider on first reading an ordinance amending chapter 70, streets, sidewalks, and other public places, article three, construction, sections 70 to 77, restricted use, 70 to 79, maximum plant height, 70-80, minimum branch height above street gutter flow lines, and 70-81, extending into street for the Friendswood City Code to revise the permitted height of plants, trees, and branches in and over restricted areas, including visibility triangles and other traveled public ways. I have a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. This is uh, just a, a cleanup measure. Uh, historically, the city of Friendswood has established a minimum of 10 foot canopy for trees, limbs, overhanging streets, public right of ways. Uh, our building code requires a height of 13 feet before the start of every school year. Uh, when the bus routes go, our bus drivers go do their initial routes, they give us a list of trees that require trimming. By going from 10 feet to 15 feet, we allow for that uh, cushion that we need to ensure that both uh, large vehicles such as school buses, as well as RVs and fire engines can adequately access uh, our roadways without getting damage from the tree limbs. Gotcha. Questions? All in favor? Okay, item 10B, consider an ordinance amending the city's general budget for fiscal year 2023-2024 by approving budget amendment eight and providing for supplemental appropriation and or transfer of certain funds. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions on this? All in favor? Unanimous. 10C, consider a resolution adopting an updated vision statement for the city of Friendswood. Trish, do I have a motion? You have a motion with some additional language. The Friendswood City Council is dedicated to supporting a safe family and business friendly community by providing quality public services and the rest is, is virtually the same. Okay, I will second that motion. If I get that. So do you want to talk about it a second? So at uh, Council Member Hank's request, there's a, a revised statement before you at the dais. Uh, the, oh. It's two sentences similar to what was included in your backup material. Um, the changes are in red. The additions underlined. The strike through is what's being removed from it. Um, again, this was a result of the retreat that took place uh, two Saturdays back. Uh, trying to adopt an overall vision for this city council for the coming years. Um, the things that made it into this vision statement were based upon the comments that were given by council members at the retreat. And ultimately, should council adopt this vision statement, the basis of all of the city's operations are gonna funnel into these, these statements. May I say something? Yes, we have a motion so, and a second. So now we're in the discussion phase. So first, I want to thank the staff. I think you did a great job of, of taking notes of everything that we said. I just feel like a vision statement is going to be here for several years uh, before we revise it. But uh, the passionate things that we talked about when, when each council member spoke in passion or passionately about things, it was about the community, the strong sense of community, <coughs> the family atmosphere, being friendly to business and balancing the tax rate. So it was quality of life. And so I didn't want to rewrite a whole mission statement because y'all did a great job. And I, and I really, every one of us could write a mission statement, a vision statement. I mean, that would be different. So I just thought if we could add those words that talked about safe, since we all mentioned that, family, and then business friendly, uh, mm -hmm. that it would, I think, encapsulize what we were most passionate about, and then just left the rest pretty much the same. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I think the English language has too many words, you know, so <laughs> trying to pick the exact perfect word. Right. Other languages probably so a lot simpler. we don't simpler. have to amend anything. She's already done She's that. She did that with her motion. Yes, so. I, I will ask, this is not a requirement that the vote be unanimous, but for this to be effective, it needs to be something that the council in totality supports. So if there is any concerns with it, then we need to go back to the drawing board. By all means, that's fine. Uh, for it to be successful, we need unanimous support. I agree. I think your modification really hits 
closer to the point for me. Okay. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Okay. We got a vision statement. <coughs> Item 10D, consider a resolution amending the City Council's rules and procedure to refine the procedures for purposes of efficiency and for conformance with state and local laws. Do I have a motion on this item? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? In, in reading through it, um, I didn't see where we were limiting the public. I saw more um, maybe obstructions restrictions on how we're to proceed more so than I saw the public. The public still gets three minutes and uh, can be allowed uh, additional minutes if the mayor or a presiding officer uh, uh, wishes them to speak longer. I saw more cleaning up how we're supposed to act than I did, did see uh, a, a limiting or restricting the public access to visit with us about it in a public comment situation. Is there a lot of difference so, from what we did before? I believe the one one limiting thing is going from five minutes to three minutes on the public hearing. Everything else is, I believe, as you said, um, but that would be the one limiting thing. We did canvas um, and did a survey of 20 cities nearby. They always had, <coughs> yeah. appeared the same number of minutes for their public comment section as they did for their public hearing. So we were just conforming it to that, but that, was, that would be a limiting thing, I would think. That's the only mm. thing I can think of in the but just to be clear, the presiding, in this case, mayor, could give them additional minutes if necessary. Absolutely, we did not take that out. So it doesn't say it can't happen. Do we have to leave that in there on the five, or, or can we go back to the five? And I wasn't here on the discussion on the retreat about why we limited it down. And when I see Bel Air on the, the list, I kind of look at that as the city that it's good to follow on the way they do the rules to where they're very, I guess, resident-friendly. So is there... Why did we go from the five to the three? We're just trying to be consistent across. We've just noticed that most cities do have the same amount of time for each with the mayor being able to extend the period of time, but th these are your rules, so. Yeah, we'd like to. Yeah, I, um, I agree with everything that the changes we've made, but I still think that we ought to leave it at five minutes. I think having been in P and Z for so many years and then being on council, I think it just gives everybody who's nervous at the podium, gives them a chance to really make their points. And two more minutes per person isn't going to um, really extend the meeting that long in my mind. I'd rather keep what we have. And I think I'm okay with that too, to Mr. Johnson's point, you know, allowing uh, in the case of the public hearings to go five minutes is uh, what we've been doing. And I, I would be okay with leaving it at five minutes. But more importantly, clarifications for two thirds votes for our part. Oh that, yeah, that sort of thing. That's I don't think anybody has cleared questions. up for state law. Yeah, state law. I agree with that. But since uh, uh, since y'all haven't voted yet, yes. we're going to need an amended motion. I understand that part. And, okay, yes. just making so, sure. But, but I think John time. wanted to say something. Well, I, I move that we amend it to have a consistent five minutes for the public, public hearing. comment and for the later. Second well, wait a motion. minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait. <laughs> so, I'm okay with the public hearing part going to five minutes. Public comment, uh, three minutes, I think, is enough. Typically, public comment, uh, people come in, and typically, half the time they're they're talking about something that's not even on the agenda for that night. So, you know, it's good to let people, I think, have their say on anything they want to talk about, because some cities even limit uh, what you can say in public comment to only has to be agenda related. We don't do that. We allow people to come in and, and if they got a beef with uh, the leash law or something, they could come and rail against us, at us for three minutes and have their say. But then when we're in a specific topic like a zone change, when we're at a public hearing and people want to get up there and make an argument for or against, you know, I think it's reasonable to allow five minutes and much as I hate uh, extended meetings sometimes, uh, I, I think it's only right that we... So I think if you would amend it to say, hey, yes, just change it, the public hearing comment, leave that at five minutes as opposed to what we have written in the thing is three. I agree. So I will second your amended motion. Thank you. So now we vote on the amended motion. Correct. All in favor of the amended motion. Okay. Amended. Okay, so now we have the amended motion. 
now we need to vote on the so motion. By, by default, you're approving the resolution as drafted, save and accept five minutes for public hearings. Going back to maintaining the Correct. public hearing part is five minutes. And okay. all the other things about us having to make a motion first, all of that is still in there, so that's good. Yeah, okay, that's okay. good. Or, you know, not having to do that. Yeah. Not having to do okay. it. Okay. All right. So we vote for So this. now we have a motion and a second. With the exception. Yeah. Well, okay. this. If you're going yep. back to the public hearing section, I'm going to have the public hearing procedure. Five, five minutes. minutes. Okay. Okay. So all in favor of that? Yay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Um, Last time. And uh, what about, what else? That's it. That's it for that? That and, item's done. That item's done. Well, thank you. Good grief. All right, item 11, consent agenda. I need a motion to approve motion to our approve. consent agenda. Second. Okay, a motion and a second. All in favor? All right, moving on. Item 12, executive session. It is now five, 549, we will now recess into and conduct an executive session pursuant to section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code to seek the advice of the city's attorneys regarding cause number 18-CV-0108, Tostado versus City of Friendswood in the 122nd Judicial District Court, Galveston County, Texas. I now reconvene the open meeting of Friendswood City Council and announce that in accordance with section 551.102 of the Texas Government Code, no action was taken in executive session. Item 13, adjournment. There being no further items, this meeting is now adjourned.